All right, hours and hours later, you finally get your pie image all set to go. Something happens, boom, it's dead, and you're at a loss. And you're like, I wish I would have backed it up. Unfortunately, that has happened to me, and I've had to go through the process of backing up and restoring. So I want to teach you guys how to do this. That way, you don't have to go through the headache of having to rebuild it. Unfortunately, there is no backup and restore magic key on the keyboard. So put on your thinking caps and let's do this. Let's start with a simple one, just backing up a file or a folder. Everything's perfect, you want to keep what you got. This is how you do it. So in order to back up any file, you need WinSCP. So go ahead and go to your computer into Google and type in WinSCP download. Now this program will allow you to access any file on your image. So one of the things is when you have Samba shares and things like that, you can't get to all the files, only the ROMs and configs and things like that. WinSCP gives you access to all the files. So go ahead and go to the site, download site, click download, and you'll get it to set up installer. Go ahead and run that. Uh, you can run through this pretty quickly with accept and next and next. Uh, I've been using this for many years, so I do a custom installation. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with running the basic installation. I just have my own particular uh, needs. <laughs> so anyway, once you step through this and get to the install, it'll install fairly quick. Uh, then you can launch it or you can do a donation if you like. As I said, it's free. It's not required at all. Go ahead and hit finish and let it boot up. So there's going to be a window that pops up to log in. And this is going to let you log into your Raspberry Pi. So on the left side you have new site. So we're going to set up our first site. So let's go to SCP for our protocol. That's going to let you talk to the Raspberry Pi. For your host name you're going to type in the IP. You can get this from show IP on the uh, RetroPie config page. <clears throat> and you type in your IP and your username and password which would be Pi and then Raspberry. Unless you change it of course. And once you do that all you got to do is hit save and this will save this login configuration for your Pi. You can name it or not. I chose to uh, go ahead and save the password so I don't type it in. And now it created a new site on the left. So all you gotta do is select login. And it'll log in. It'll ask if you wanna create a new key. Go ahead and say yes. So now what you have is a Windows Explorer view of all the files. So on the right hand side is the Pi. So I can go all the way to the root directory, I can go into home, you know, I can go anywhere. And on the left side is your computer. So you have your desktop, you have all your mounted drives, your CDs, just about you know anything that your computer has access to. So this is a Windows version and you can navigate up and down through the parent directories, you can use a drop down and just select downloads or desktop, you know, just like a normal Windows Explorer. And so on the right side, you know, is the Pi. So say you want to go into opt, uh, retro Pi, configs, um, you know, and just, I don't know. Let's say you wanted to back up something in MAME Advance. So I'm going to MAME Advance. So here's your RC files. Let's say you made all your changes for uh, 0.94 uh, for advanced MAME. You're like, I don't want to lose this. <laughs> you know, I've made so many changes. All you got to do is drag and drop. So we're going to take the folder take it to our desktop by dragging it from right to left you may get prompted go ahead and say OK and once it's done you'll get a confirmation and that's it now the folder MAME Advance is on your desktop or wherever you decided to put it now what's even better is you can open up this file go ahead and right click and click edit see the biggest problem about Unix is a lot of people aren't familiar with Nano or VI you know, so if you put this on your desktop, you can do it in Notepad or you can just right click edit and win SCP. And let's see, uh, I'm going to change the, you know, mapping for uh, you know, Cheyenne. We're going to change the coin button from 04 to 05. I'm going to go up and save it. And now I have a new file and I can go right back into the Pi and upload that. So let's do that. 
let's go back into OptRetropy configs. And here's the original. So what I'm going to do is just right click and rename this. And we're going to change it from .rc to something other than .rc so that I can override it. So as you can see, I've already done this below with an rc underscore orig. <laughs> so I'm going to call this underscore uh, original. Original. Whatever. <laughs> but um, anyway, the beauty of this is you can simply just drag and drop those changes. So move that file over and you're done. So all you got to do is restart uh, emulation station and it will reread this file and you're good to go. Okay, so pretty simple, not too bad. I think you get the overall idea though. This allows you to back up just about any file on the system. Well, in fact, it does let you back up any file or folder on the system. So now let's get into something a little bit bigger. Let's say you love your entire image. You don't even know where to begin. You've made so many changes. You want to back up the entire image. And in fact, you want to be able to burn this image to another disk. That way you can have two systems running. How do I back up my entire image? It's not that hard and it's actually not that scary at all. So we're going to head on over to Google, our favorite search engine. Type in Win32 Disk Imager and go ahead into the SourceForge website and download that. Now we're going to launch it from our desktop. So we can install it, go ahead and select next, next again, you can create a desktop shortcut if you'd like, and just run the installer. And we'll finish out, and it'll start right up. So the disk imager is pretty simple, and on the left is an image file, and on the right side is the device. So you can either write to a device, <clears throat> or what we're trying to do is take from the device and write it out to a file. So what you want to do is if you're trying to take your image file, <clears throat> or sorry, if you're trying to create an image file from your Pi, first of all, you want to make sure that you have the right device selected. So I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer. I'm going to look at my PC. So my boot F drive, this is what my Pi looks like when it is in my SD card reader. You'll see the kernel file, config file, uh, your overlay folders, etc., etc. Okay, and that's all that Windows can read. Anyway, make note of your drive and make sure that that's what you have selected. That is very important. So if you selected your SD card, then what you got to do is select where you want this image file to go. So you can put it on your external drive, you can put it on your desktop, it really doesn't matter. Um, I have a folder of Pi images. I've been building a lot of different images for the Pi, uh, for the B and the B+. So all you need to do is name it. We'll call it, you know, whatever, backup, doesn't really matter. Just so long as it's somewhere that has enough, enough disk space. So if you're creating a very large one, you know, it may take a very long time. Mine's 128 gigs. So we'll go ahead and click read, which will take the SD card image and read it into that file. So go ahead when you're ready and click read and let it go. And that is it. It is literally that easy. You have now been trained and know how to back up your entire SD card image at any time. So no matter what you've done, uh, you can always go to these backups and restore, which is what we're gonna cover next. So let's get into it. All right, now you need to get Etcher. So type that into Google, do a search, and what we're gonna do is download and run the program. It's also free, very simple to use. Once you download it and launch it, it'll bring up a menu. You want to select your image. This is your .img file. So now that you got your folder with all your IMGs, go ahead and pick the one that you want to restore. Hopefully it's the right one, <laughs> but just drag and drop it. Now all you got to do is select your drive. So it's very crucial here that you select your SD card. Do not select any other drive. And then simply hit flash. You can read this message, but it basically says that the image that you're about to burn is pretty big. Go ahead and hit continue. It'll start, and that's pretty much it. Give it some time, guys. It will burn, and it will burn successfully. Now, the cool thing 
is that Etcher will actually validate. It will do some other verification and some hash checking. So I've never had a problem with it. I prefer it over Win32 for burning the image to the disk. As far as backing it up though, uh, I like Win32 Disk Imager. So let that go and you have now successfully restored a backup image. Well, I wish I could say it was a lot harder than that guys, but it's pretty simple. So if you guys got any questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's easier ways to do backups, let me know. But as far as I can tell you, it's that simple guys. Backing up files and folders and images and restoring them. Can't get no simpler than that. I'll see you next time.